thank you so much dr smriti for nice introduction and uh, first of all special thanks to my dearest friend dr rutul dr amit there dr dharmendra panchal for giving me this wonderful opportunity in psg for giving me this very very important topic so without wasting much time i am sharing my screen so is it visible and yes sir out okay. thanks for confirmation uh, so my today's topic is successful lifestyle modification in gestational diabetes mellitus it's very very important because what is hyperglycemia in pregnancy we all know gdm is defined as any degree of glucose intolerance with onset or first recognized during the pregnancy approximately 7% of all the pregnancy are complicated by gdm and range from 1 to 14% depending on the population studied and diagnostic test and more than 2 lakh cases are annually so what are the main risk factor for the development of gdm we all know mart obesity older age personal history of gdm lipoceria strong family history of diabetes ethnicity pcod hypertension all are the very most common and very very important risk factor for the gdm and the adverse pregnancy outcomes are the macrosomia shoulder dystocia jaundice polycythemia respiratory distress and hypocalcemia and there is a increase in the fetal mal formation and perinatal mortality and it predisposes the child to diabetic phenotype in the later life so what are the maternal complication the weight gain maternal hypertensive disorder miscarriage third trimester fetal death cesarean delivery and long term risk factor of the type 2 diabetes so what are the management of the hyperglycemia in the pregnancy the first is the medical nutrition therapy mnt second exercise oha insulin and most important psychological support we all know the role of the medical nutrition therapy is the first is the achieve the normal glycemia second minimize the insulin requirement third educate in the healthy eating habits for the rest of the life fourth balance nutrition for the mother and fetus to avoid the excess weight gain and fifth prevention of the hypoglycemia and the ketosis so what are the main recommendation for the treatment target to achieve the normal glycemia and the test is the fasting plasma glucose should be between 65 to 95 mg per dl 1 hour postprandial is less than 140 and 2 hour postprandial is less than 120 mg per dl so all pregnant women gradually develop the insulin resistant during the pregnancy so so it sufficient nutrient supply for the growing the fetus and the energy requirement for the normal or underweight women there is no sufficient evidence to suggest that the energy requirement for women with gdm should be different from the normal life of women or suggest a specific optimal calorie intake for women with gdm so what are the main recommendation weight gain in the pregnancy for twin pregnancy recommended weight gain is 16 to 20.5 kg for underweight 12.5 to 18 kg for normal weight pregnant woman 11.5.5 to 16 kg for overweight women 7 to 11.5 kg and for obese women with bmi more than 29 the recommended range of the weight is the 6 kg so what is gdm diet chart total calories 2230 kilo calorie per day are the recommend so for total fat that 25 mg total sodium 1000 mg per day carbohydrate 500 mg per day protein 60 to 65 g per day iron 21 mg recommended so for macronutrient carbohydrate intake 50 to 55% kilo calorie intake protein is 20 to 25% kilo calorie intake and fat is 25 to 30% kilo calorie per day required 
so carbohydrate are the important dietary source of the energy vitamins mineral and the fiber content and it is the main nutrient that affect the post glucose level so carbohydrate intake can be manipulated by the control in the total amount of carbohydrate and distribution of the carbohydrate over the several meal and snack and it depend also on the types of the carbohydrate and glycemic index is very very important because single food item rather than the combination of the food can impact the blood sugar differently and it doesn't consider the all the variables that affect the blood sugar such how food is prepared or how much is eaten and it only includes the food that contain the carbohydrate and it doesn't rank the food based on the nutrient content food with the low gi ranking may be high in the calories sugar or the saturated fat even ada standard of medical state the glycemic index can provide the additional benefit to total the carbohydrate control even food with low gi less than 55 produce a low post meal glucose elevation and food with high gi more than 70 show high post prandial and the glycemic load is equal to glycemic index and multiplied by amount of the available carbohydrate food per serving divided by 100 so it high with the high glycemic load with more than 20 glycemic load between to 11 to 90 there is a intermediate and glycemic load less than 10 there is a low glycemic so these are the some foods which are suggest the high glycemic index so dates corn flakes jelly beans puff potato donut french fries white bread all are the high glycemic index but you just see the difference the french fries has the 75 high glycemic index but the glycemic load per serving is 22 so these are the glycemic index and the glycemic food chart so white bread has the 64 glycemic index and the glycemic load per serving 23 these are the 10 low glycemic fruits for the diabetic patients first is the cherry grape fruit dried apricot pears apples orange plum strawberry peach and the grapes how the carbohydrate count it a dietitian determine a person's dietary needs the individual is given a daily carbohydrate allowance and the carbohydrate allowance can be expressed in the grams or in the number of the carbohydrate portion allowed per meal so suppose the total 6 meal per day so 3 is the main meal and 3 is the snacks so distribution of the carbohydrate in the daily meals divided into 6 breakfast in the 15 percentage after the snack one 10 percentage lunch is the higher 30 percentage snacks to 10 percentage in dinner 20 percentage and snack three is the 15 percent that's the how it's six meals day divided in the day even dipsy guideline also suggest calorie distribution especially in the breakfast so as part as of the medical nutrition therapy pregnant diabetic are advised to widely distribute that calorie consumption especially the breakfast because by this undue pit in the plasma glucose level after the ingestion of the total quantity of the breakfast at the one time is avoided for example if four idli or chapati or the bread apply to all the breakfast menu is taken off for the breakfast at the 8 am and after 2 hour post prandial blood sugar is 140 mg suppose the quantity divided into two equal portion one portion at the 8 am and remaining after the 10 am and after the two hour post prandial is almost 120 or 110 it fall by the 20 to 30 ml so this advice has scientific base as the picking of the plasma glucose is high with the breakfast then with the lunch and the dinner so gdm mother have a deficiency in the first phase insulin secretion and to match with the insulin deficiency the challenge of the quantity of the food at the one time should also be less so i just already mentioned other than the four idli at the one time two idli at the 8 am and another two idli at the 10 am it falls the sugar almost 20 to 30 mg right so what are the artificial sweeteners like saccharin aspartame neotame sucralose stevia all are the data concerned the use of the sugar substitute during the pregnancy are limited so they don't suggest the increase the risk of the toxicity even adverse pregnancy outcome or the neonatal issue so it is recommend that it, it can be consumed in the moderation and that pregnant women adhere to adi level outline by the regulatory directives for fiber two types soluble and the insoluble fiber 
So for soluble, there's a legumes, oats, and the fruits. And for insoluble fiber, there's a whole grain, bread, cereals, and some vegetables. So both increase the satiety, slow in the absorption time, and lower the glycemic index. So one study compared with low fiber, moderate fiber, and high fiber diet in non-insulin requirement the women with GDM. And this study concluded. The pilot study study demonstrated the high fiber diet were not associated with the lowering of the blood glucose level. So for dietary protein, ADA recommend the protein almost 15 to 20 percentage, and protein content in the ADA diet and euglycemic diet up to 20 percent of the total daily calorie intake. And increased satiety has been seen with the meal that high in the protein content. So in Indian scenario. Increment of the protein intake is necessary and up to total 1.1 gram per kg per body weight per day women required. So for fat, there is the less than 10% saturated fatty acid and up to the 10% only unsaturated fatty acid required. And the reminder derived for the mono unsaturated fatty acids. Even the fat contain calories to help the supply energy to you and your baby. So fat help your body absorb the vitamin A, D, E and K. So fat also give you the essential fatty acids and help your baby's brain and nervous system development. So it is important to focus on the eating the healthful fats and the following foods are good source of the fats like most nuts and the seeds, peanut butter, cooking oil like olive, canola, peanut or the flax is very very good, avocado and the fatty fish like salmon. Even for the nutrient needs, there is no indication that the women with the GDM should not follow the same guideline for the nutrient intake for all pregnant women. Even exercise is an obvious agent therapy to MNT for the women with GDM and light and moderate intensity activities such as working for 20 to 30 minutes per day, it can be safely encouraged and modest improvement in the glycemic control and might be achieved. For physical activity, planned physical activity of 30 minutes per day is recommended for all individuals capable of participating and advising the GDM patient to walk briskly or do arm exercise while seated in the chair for at least 10 minutes after the each meal accomplish this goal. And regular aerobic exercise with proper warm-up and cool-down has been shown, lower the fasting, as well as the postprandial glucose concentration in several small studies of previously sedentary individuals with GDM. Even exercise is an obvious agent therapy to MNT for women with GDM. One study of acute effect of exercise on the glucose level showed almost 23 mg per deciliter drop in the glucose value at the 30 minutes. However, the safety of the prescribed exercise for glucose management has been a concern. And women should monitor fetal activity and blood glucose level before and after exercise and limit the physical activity of 15 to 20 minutes. And women who have been physically active before the becoming pregnant are encouraged to continue their active lifestyle. So before exercising, 5 to 10 minutes should be spent stretching in order to warm up the muscles and minimize the risk of the ligament and injury or the muscle cramps. Aerobic exercise will be most beneficial to control the blood sugar level. And this type of exercise include walking, stationary cycling, swimming or exercise. And daily exercise for 15 to 30 minutes is recommended. Even exercise and glycemic control is very, very important in the GDM patients. Know the benefit of the exercise while you are pregnant. It is the back and pelvic pain, lower the blood pressure, prevent the excess weight gain, it relieves the constipation, it improves your mood, and it prevents the gestational diabetes. So how to manage the gestational diabetes? First is short meditation session. Second, what after the meal? Third, monitor the fasting glucose level and after every meal. Fourth, plan for meal and snacks. Fifth, maintain a food lot and understand the food that help or hurt. And since it's difficult to manage, take the medication, but stay calm and still try to manage the diet and forwards. So, 12 for the exercise, the exercise through entire pregnancy, manage the glucose and stress hormone level, develop a safe weight training program with medication, stay with the low impact aerobic training, pilots and yoga are gaining popularity, and postpartum exercise, weight loss, depression, improve the fitness and lifestyle habits. So, these are the Current info on the exercise and the diabetes, exercise in the equation. So by the way, I conclude my slide. Nutrition recommendation for the women with GDM including the management of the gestational weight gain, control of calorie intake, modifying the macronutrient composition and distribution, and providing vitamins and minerals to meet the pregnancy need. 
and food plan should be designed to fulfill the minimum nutrient requirement for the pregnancy or achieve the lysemic goal without weight loss or ketonemia and be culturally appropriate and individual to take into account the patient's body habits weight gain and physical activity and nutrition intervention for gdm emphasize healthy food choice portion control and put in practice that can be continued postpartum and may help to prevent the later diabetes obesity cardiovascular disease and cancer by that thank you so much